Hello everyone, welcome to yet another lecture series on basics of electrical engineering. In this video, we're going to talk about behavior of a PR capacitor in an AC circuit. So let's get started. So we all know a capacitor is basically a passive element. However, the nature of capacitor with respect to AC supply is a very important aspect that we have to study. So there are a lot of things that we'll be covering with respect to the behavior of a PR capacitor. We're going to see the nature of current, the waveforms with respect to voltage and current, the phasor diagram with respect to voltage and current quantities. And we are also going to see the impedance offered by a capacitor, the phase difference between voltage and current, the power factor associated with a capacitor, and finally the power equation for a pure capacitor in an AC circuit. So let's get started. So I've considered uh, a capacitor connected to an AC supply. Uh, let us assume the voltage drop across the capacitor is VC and the current flowing through the circuit is I. So we have considered an AC supply with voltage V equal to Vm sin omega t. The reason why we are using AC supply, uh, which is a sinusoidal waveform as always, is because uh, we all know the generation is with respect to sinusoidal quantity and uh, that is already covered in one of our videos. In case you want to know more about it, please do watch it. The link will be provided in the description. So uh, we'll be considering an alternating voltage V is equal to Vm sin omega t. So the current associated with it is given by the formula I is equal to C into dV by dt for a PR capacitor. So we'll be substituting the value of V. So uh, V is given as Vm sin omega t according to our equation and uh, differentiating uh, sin omega t with respect to dt you will be getting omega, omega C Vm cos omega t differentiation of sin theta is cos theta. So I've written it in this particular form and uh, once that is done we can write cos omega t as sine of theta plus 90 degree according to ASTC rule. So we are representing in terms of sine so that we can get to know the actual phase difference between the two quantities. So in this case, uh, it's very clear that if you compare I is equal to I m sine omega t plus 90 degree where I m is written as omega C V m comparing this equation and comparing the voltage equation, you can clearly see the phase uh, difference in uh, current I is leading uh, the voltage by 90 degree that is sine of omega t plus 90 degree degree so plus conveys that it's leading so that we can therefore conclude that therefore if, for a pure capacitor current leads the voltage by 90 degree so current leads voltage by 90 degree in case of a capacitor uh, whereas in case of an inductor the current lags behind the voltage by 90 degree so in case you've not watched that video please do watch it i have uh, provided the link in the video description so uh, how does the waveform look like the voltage waveform is represented as a normal sinusoidal uh, wave and uh, since the current leads the voltage so it will be be starting prior to the voltage waveform being started so it is slightly uh, shifted towards left and therefore current begins initially and then the voltage starts building up so that's how the waveform is represented with respect to phasor diagram as we have already considered uh, in case of a pure resistor and inductor reference will always be the voltage and it is in this particular direction since current leads uh, the voltage by 90 degree so uh, the current i is indicated in upward direction in this particular position because 90 degree phase shift will be given uh, in the perpendicular position with respect to the reference value and uh, uh, the value of current is leading that's why it's indicated in the upward direction if it is uh, lagging then it will come in the downward direction which is in case of an inductor so what is the impedance offered? We know the definition from the fundamental value definition of impedance that is equal to V by I. So with respect to uh, the instantaneous values Vm and Im we are talking about. So I am writing it as Vm and Im. So we know that the value of Im is equal to omega C into Vm that is already derived in our previous slide. So uh, referring to that, uh, substituting and cancelling v out Vm will be represented representing uh, impedance as 1 by omega C. So this is the impedance offered by uh, the capacitor connected to an AC circuit. So what does that mean? The quantity 1 by omega c is called as capacitive reactance and it is denoted by Xc. This is the point where the capacitive concept of capacitive reactance started to take place into existence. So once we are um, aware of uh, the capacitive reactance Xc, uh, now what can be done is that we will be considering a DC supply. If you are considering a DC supply, the frequency for a DC supply is 0, isn't it? So the value of Xc substituting uh, omega is equal to 2 pi f, the value of frequency is 0 so omega will be 0 so 1 over 0 will be equal to infinity so the capacitive reactance will be very high and ideally speaking it will be equal to infinity so that's the reason why we can say capacitor acts as open circuit for DC supply and uh, that's why it's uh, usually said that uh, inductor acts as short circuit and capacitor acts as open circuit for a DC supply I I guess this point is uh, uh, clear uh, with you people so if you have any doubts please feel free to reach out so uh, once this is done we have already talked uh, spoken about uh, the 
the phase difference uh, between the voltage and current phasors so in this case it's 90 degree uh, as already uh, discussed with respect to the current leading voltage by 90 degree so the phase difference is clearly 90 degree so the power factor associated uh, is the cosine of the phase difference so power factor is equal to cos 90 that is equal to 0 ideally speaking with respect to capacitor the power factor uh, that is supposed to be there is 0 but uh, practically we will not be achieving that uh, there will be certain deviations it will be very low or uh, there tends to be deviation based on leading or lagging power factors and all those things but however from the fundamental definition power factor for a purely capacitive load is supposed to be equal to zero so once this concept is understood uh, from the definition of power from ohm's law that is already derived in one of our videos so we'll be taking that p is equal to v into i so v is given as vm sin omega t and i is given as im sin of omega t plus 90 degree that is already derived so what i'll be doing is i'll place vm im uh, next to each other sin omega t is already retained sin of omega t plus 90 degree can be written as cos omega t according to astc rule again so once uh, that is done uh, can i write it as vm im by 2 sin 2 omega t this is because sin theta cos theta can be written as sin 2 theta by 2 or in other words sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta so that's why it is represented as sin 2 omega t by 2 this quantity so once this is done uh, can we write the waveform for this particular quantity in this particular fashion the reason is very simple because it is a sinusoidal waveform and uh, the there is positive sign i mean if nothing is indicated it is positive quantity so it is starting from positive quantity according to the frequency uh, of uh, the waveforms with respect to sinusoidal quantity uh, the nature of waveform is very clear and it looks like this uh, so what does this mean the average value of uh, power over one complete cycle is equal to zero this is because if you are taking average value for one complete cycle positive value and negative value gets cancelled out so the average power will be equal to zero so what does that mean the power consumed by a purely capacitive circuit is zero so this is a very important point either capacitor nor inductor will consume any power what it does is that it only involves in the process of exchanging energy between one point to another in the circuit so this is the point where the fundamental concept of reactive power came into existence so one important conclusion to be noted is the power consumed by a purely capacitive pure capacitive circuit is zero similarly in case of a purely inductive circuit it is again zero however resistive circuit we have already seen it consumes uh, power and uh, the quantity of power is also indicated in the video so if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me uh, by writing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video thank you